Hi, I'm Tom Conley, the Regional Sales Manager with Esprit Cam System. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you through our IMTS Spark presentation about automation and Esprit's interface. So, today's topic is Esprit and automation. It's a missing constituent component in a lot of programming departments. Again, I'm Tom Conley. I'm out of the East Coast office. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is how Esprit actually gets its knowledge base set up. So let's take a look at our automation. Our knowledge base machining or knowledge base manufacturing is known as the KBM. The KBM is actually a database that includes automation tools and strategies. So what's actually inside of the KBM database? Well, it stores manufacturing information, informa in manufacturing strategies, uh, information, intelligence, strategies you've used in the past. So for instance, manufacturing processes, machining cycles, drilling, tapping, pecking, pocketing, contouring, all the way up to full five axis simultaneous cycles. These automation tools are available for a lot of different machine types. So our standard mills from 2.5D prismatic milling to 3D, your verticals, your horizontals, full five-axis machining centers, and then also the lathe world. So two-axis lathe, multi-turret, multi-spindle lathes, mill turn machines, multitasking machines, Swiss-style lathes, and then also wire EDM, from two-axis wire EDM to four-axis, including even rotary turn wall burn functionality. All of these machining processes can be automated regardless of the machine type. And then of course, tooling, not just the geometric information for the tooling, but also the material. What's the tool made of? What's the tool coded in? Because this is gonna influence speed, speeds, depth of cut, cutter engagement, and other machining information. Of course, along with the tooling information, we need the material information. Not just what's the material, but what's the condition of the material? Is it forged? Is it cast? Is it annealed? Is it heat treated? Is it flame cut? And then the manufacturing attributes, actually about your solid CAD model, depths of features, angles of walls, axes, the minimum and maximum internal corner radius. So minimum internal corner radius is really interesting. We're going to come back to that in a few minutes. And then, of course, our feature types, holes, pockets, contours, surfacing, roughing, cores, cavities. And then all of our fixturing, all of our work holding information can also be included into the KBM database. And this is going to be separated per machine type, model, and control. And in some instances, you really will break it down per control because some controls support various CAN cycles and others may not. So you want to make sure that you're getting accurate code out to the machine. And then much, much more. The limit of a spree's automation is literally your imagination. So let's see actually how the work process flows. So first, engineering develops a design. You can see our CAD feature tree on the left-hand side, and then our actual solid CAD model on the right. You can see that we have bosses, cuts, extrudes, sketches, work planes, datums, and then also our hole wizard, which is a counterbore 5 16 binding head cap screw or machine screw. So let's take a look at three common feature types, holes, contours, and pockets. Most prismatic work can be broken into these three types, but then as we get into more complex work, we can incorporate different types of features. So Esprit analyzes holes model from your CAD systems hole wizard. So here in the properties window, you can see manufacturing information brought into a spree, including the holes name, depth, diameter, chamfer diameter, chamfer angle, counter bore, counter bore depth, counter bore diameter. If it's a through hole, if it's not a through hole, if it's not a through hole, what's the bottom angle? What's the work plane? What's the work coordinate? So that information comes through, but then below that, you can actually see the CAD feature information, which comes directly from your CAD software. So it's flowing that product manufacturing information from engineering to programming and then out onto the floor. It's that seamless flow and integration of information. We can see that this is a counterbore for a 15, for a 5 16 binding head machine screw. It's an ANSI inch. It's 5 16 it's binding head screw. It's a close hole fit. And then all the way at the bottom, you'll see our knowledge base, the feature type, M meaning milled, hole, it's type of hole, and this hole will be drilled. And its classification is small. 
So we can actually see on pockets very similar functionality. So it's a pocket, it knows the depth, it knows the plane and work coordinate, it knows the minimum internal corner radius, which helps with tool selection. And then again, at the bottom, the knowledge base automatically recognizes that it's a pocket and that pocket classification is set to large. And that's gonna influence tool selection, tool path, step over, and other machining processes. So let's actually see how this works in real time. Well, first you're gonna bring in your workpiece. And on the left, we can see all of our cuts, extrudes, bosses. All of this information comes in from our CAD system. First, we have to tell Esprit, what are we programming for? We're programming for a mill in imperial units. So, okay, we're going to program for a mill this time. We bring our CAD in, and then we're going to feature it. So with a single click, we can recognize all of the pockets on this workpiece and describe them as one complex feature set. And then Esprit automatically recognizes it as a pocket that needs to be milled. Same thing recognizing the holes. Select your solid CAD body, let Esprit's advanced feature recognition pick it up, and Esprit recognizes it that is a milled hole that's going to be drilled. Same thing with the chamfer, same thing with walls, same thing with many other feature set types. So we'll go ahead and select those features, and then we'll pass them through to our process manager. This analyzes the feature types and then applies tool paths to them. But before it applies the tool path, it lets you analyze what's going to be happening. So for this hole, we're going to spot drill with the counter bore, and then we're going to drill, and then we're going to spot face and the counter bore. And with the chamfer, we're going to run an end mill around it. So if we're happy, we go ahead and hit and apply, and then Esprit puts all of those processes to our features. Esprit is feature-based, so it uses those strategies, and it modifies them based on the geometry of the workpiece that you're working on. The speed, feed, depth of cut, step over, engagement angle, all of those are consistent based on your tool and material. They just morph themselves to the shape of the new workpiece that you're machining. So if those strategies have worked in the past, you know they should work again in the future. This is automation. This is preserving tribal knowledge from the shop. So you can take a really great programmer, trap their knowledge, let them retire, and then new folks that come in, you can reuse that information. Okay, so let's see this on a slightly different workpiece. So here we have another workpiece, similar, there's a through pocket, there's a chamfer, there's walls. The pocket is slightly less complex. There's holes, holes with counter bores. So again, we identify what machine type we're programming for. We're programming for a mill and we're programming it in imperial units. Again, we're gonna use Esprit's advanced automatic feature recognition command to feature our entire workpiece. Again, we can pocket the entire feature with just a single click and Esprit recognizes that it's a pocket and its classification. You select the entire solid CAD body, run whole recognition feature, and again, Esprit's recognition rule can pick up on those feature types based on the CAD information passed down from your CAD system. The class of fit, if it's threaded, if it's not threaded, if it's a through hole, if there's an angle, if there's a countersink, if there's a counter board, all of this information gets passed through to Esprit and then we bring it onto our process manager where Spree will automatically assign operations and strategies to those features based on manufacturing constraints you've given it. So you get to predetermine what operations are going to be applied to these generic feature types. So you don't have to run this generically. You can run it how your machine shop runs their parts. Establish your own company standards and then this allows programmers to not deviate from that because they can reuse these strategies again and again in the future. This not only provides faster programming, but it provides confidence. The programmer knows that it behaves similarly every single time. The operator knows that the code comes out in the same form and fashion every time, so they don't have to go back and double check and ask and, and make sure that everything's appropriate. It's consistently correct again and again and again. Okay, so actually, how does this work? Let's take a look at some of the nuts and bolts of it. So it's a, a three-step step process here that's going to allow us to implement our KBM process technology. Well, the first step here, labeled as A, is identifying a feature type, which is specific to our feature families. Then we create processes and steps for that feature. And then we create recognition rules. So we have to have a feature type, then we have to have processes and a recognition rule, which will allow us to apply those processes specifically to that um, feature. Okay, so here on the left, we can see chains, bores, bosses, chamfers, counterbores, countersinks, faces, holes, milled holes. 
So really, again, automation in Esprit, the limit is your imagination of the feature types that your facility produces. So you build your feature type and then you apply processes. So again, B, facing standard versus facing thin wool. So you can use different strategies based on what you're gonna be machining. And Esprit understands what you're machining based on the recognition rule. So in this case, the recognition rule is set to is face. Is that chain feature a face? So these recognition rules can be really intelligent. They can produce a lot of good information based on logic that you've developed, or you can leverage logic and embedded CAD data within Esprit's knowledge base manager from the start. So we can determine the proper processes and operations to add to those very specific feature types. So let's take a look at this recognition rule. So it says, is this a profile? So it's gonna go and ask, is that feature a profile? The first question it asks is, is the features on a layer that is named profile? If so, it is a profile. So you can actually dictate what features are what types based on what layers they're on. The second question asks you from the CAD attribute. So this is bringing in from our solid CAD modeler actual information that is brought in directly with our CAD model. Very similarly, the third question, slightly different logic, but it's looking at the CAD feature to see if it is described as profile. These can be as elaborate as you would like them to get. Again, the limit of a Spree's automation is your imagination. It's really endless. It has a fully open API. We use Microsoft Visual Basic, and you can use our KBM rule evaluator to build really elaborate logical steps. Esprit also has a cutting tool integration. So some of these processes are, of course, going to be hard-coded to specific tools. Let's say a quarter 20, tap. You might always use a 204 drill. Great, that's going to be a standard. But you might want to have, say, a pocketing operation query your tool library to select an appropriate size tool for that specific feature. And that might be logic based on the minimum internal corner radius of that feature and the volumetric material that needs to be fully removed. If that ratio is too askew, maybe you do a rough corner picking then a finish. If it's not, maybe you do a rough and then a finish. So you can use elaborate logic to produce accurate cycles again and again and again. Consistency and automation every time. Okay, so we can also continue to push this. We can link the KBM to our own internal tooling databases. We can use advanced feature recognition commands like Esprit's whole recognition command or advanced turning feature recognition functionality where it automatically builds features for turning. Also for prismatic basic milling, our pocketing, our walls, our contours, all the way up to surfacing, three axis free form milling, simultaneous four, simultaneous five axis milling operations. We also have intelligent chamfer and edge break operations. If you're running a five axis machine, don't take that part off the machine and hand deburr it. Deburr it on the machine. If you have five simultaneous axes, get it done in one. Don't take that work piece that's as valuable as it's ever gonna be and put it in the hands of someone who is not as accurate as your machine is. Let the machine do it. Eliminate hand operations, eliminate op 20s, 30s and 40s. And then of course, other machining processes or manufacturing processes like probing, you can integrate that directly into a spree to automate some of the probing on the machines to uh, set our work coordinates or check critical features after machining. And then of course, our Excel report generation re regenerator, it is customizable. So you can make it specific to your facility's needs, whether that's tooling sheets. So you can output a tool sheet, go out to the tool crib and build all, build all your tool stacks whether you're incorporating time studies, whether you're building um, job cart sheets. So you can literally barcode, scan in and out stock, scan in and out jobs, scan in and out tools. Again, the limit is your imagination. It's as far as you want to push it. This is automation.